Okay, I'm going to show you how how I build uh, ribs for the ultralight airplane. Um, here's my setup with all my parts cut. I have 1,200 pieces cut and ready to go. I have uh, the wing jig or rib jig ready to go, and then I'll I'll show you how I pre-bend the. So here's my setup to pre-bend the top ribs so that they have that curve into them. Um, they're soaked in water for uh, half a day or a day. And then these are dry right now, but you put them into this jig, there's a slot cut in the front, and then they're clamped down to, to create that bend and then allowed to dry in that position. I can do four or five at a time in this jig. Okay, I start by taking one of these pre-bent ribs and and putting it, starting it in the jig, and take a pencil and mark off where the end end of the rib should be, and also the the cut to get it down to three eighths of an inch at the trailing edge. And then I make that cut. I, this might be off camera, but I'm just going to cut it off on my little scroll saw here. two cuts and then put this back in the jig, line it up with the mark at the end, tighten the, the three cams for the top of the rib and then I'll grab another a straight piece of spruce for the bottom, um, fit that into the jig Make a little mark for the trailing edge where I want to cut it off. Cut that off. Alright, so put this back in the jig and line it up with the end. Start by gluing in the vertical. So grab a, a number one, put some glue on each end, and install this in the rib jig. Tighten the cam for the number one. Make sure everything's pressed down. Height. Grab a number three vertical. We're doing all the verticals first and then we'll go back and do the diagonals. Everything's pressed down. Now number seven, and these have a they're cut diagonally on the top, so make sure that diagonal cut is the right direction. Tighten that cam by number. I like to take a little piece of scrap plywood and make sure the glue is out of that area where the um, where the spar goes. 
photos. It's much easier to do it when it's wet than if you wait until it's dry. Okay, now number eight. These also have um, diagonal cut on the top. Seems to work best if you attach the top first and then insert the bottom. Make sure you tighten the cam. Wipe off the excess screw. Let's get a, a clamp to hold them in place. Make sure everything's pressed down. And now we're not working on the ailerons yet, so we're we're not putting this one in yet. We're only putting this in on 12 ribs. So we're we're doing the number 10 vertical. And before the before I glue the 10 vertical in, it's easier to lift this up before you glue that one in. So put some glue on the on that on the end where the trailing edge is. This is such a small one and it has tension because the trailing edge is clamped so I, I don't usually clamp that because when you glue the gussets in it's there's not enough room for the clamp and the gusset so I usually just leave that the way it is. Okay so now we do the diagonals so number two Two cam. Make sure everything's pressed down. Now the number four diagonal. Close the number four cam. Make sure everything's pressed down. Now we do a number six diagonal. Okay, now let's start with the gussets. So we'll start down here with D. Up 
plywood with the trailing edge, flush with the bottom of the jig, wipe off the excess glue on the top, and we'll just go ahead and staple that right now. On these triangular gussets, um, in most cases you can just line up the, the point with the center of the, of the vertical. In this case here we make the top flush and it fits up against this block on the, on the jig. Gussets. These the, the point can be centered on the vertical. All right, I've got the camera repositioned to maybe get a little closer view of this. So um, now I'm doing the gussets around um, vertical seven and eight. These are four B gussets. bottom ones are fairly straightforward. They just uh, go in with uh, um, 90 degrees. Just make sure the opening for the spar is, the rear spar is clear. And make sure the gussets are flush with that. And then they just butt up against the bottom of the the jig. Give a nice square. Keep everything nice and square. So. Off the excess glue. On these top two, I do, I use the same uh, 90 degree cutout, but 
on the left one, I keep the, the this point um, even with the top, but the the rest sticks out because you want to keep this 90 degrees to the spar, or parallel to the spar, I should say. And so it goes in like that, and then I cut off the excess plywood after the glue dries. And then on the right side, um, the, the left corner goes flush with the top of the rib, and then the, the rest, of, and then keep it uh, parallel to the spar, and then the other side sticks out above, and then we can trim that off later. So there are those four, and then we just staple these down. Here you have to be careful, make sure you don't you remember where the top of the rib is so you get the staple into the rib. Okay, I think I need to reposition the camera again, so hang on. Okay, now we're ready to do the, the B and C gusset. vertical number five. This uh, sea gusset, I, I put it so that the, the bottom is parallel with the bottom of the rib, and then I cut the top off later. stapling to hit the top. You gotta move it down a little bit right there. Down to vertical three, and we've got an A and a C gusset here. The A gusset just goes flush with the top of the Red. Wipe off the excess glue. And the sea gusset goes to the curl of the jig. It's got a little edge that you can just set it on and put it in place. You can shift this slightly over so that 
excuse me, the the corners, the upper corners of the gusset um, come to the same position on, on, on diagonals two and four. And it makes a nice even installation that's consistent. Now I glue vertical one, and this is two A gussets. The lower gusset is exactly 90 degrees, and so there's no trimming or anything, just installed in the jig and make sure it's flush and wipe off the excess glue. Now the, the upper one is also an A gusset, but we have to trim this gusset. I use just a tin snips and it's approximately a quarter of an inch here, so it tapers down from from nothing, and then a slight curve can be cut in it, and then cut off. I've done a few of them, so I kind of know what works. So. That's better. Now I usually remove it so that um, I'm sure that it comes out of the jig easily and then lay it flat and let it be pressed flat into a until it dries. Um, I'll, I'll reposition the camera before I pull it out. Hang on. All right, I already loosened all the cams, so now I'm gonna just pull it out of the out of the jig. Okay, so there we have a rip. Now make sure the there's not a lot of excess glue. Wipe off some of the excess. And then the other thing we want to do is make sure that on the bottom that the glue joints, there's no glue that's going to dry that would keep the next set of gussets from going in. Just 
clean off all the excess glue. Rib, so it should be fairly dry right now. And so I'll put this new one that we just built underneath the jig to keep it flat. And now you can just go through and just clean up the any glue that's left in the jig. Just make sure there's no glue that can be a problem for the next rib. Okay. And now I've got a, a piece of cloth. Use a little bit of this furniture polish and spray on the rag. I don't know that may, may not be on camera, but just put that along this bottom edge of the jig. Just helps keep the glue from sticking to the bottom edge of the jig and in these corners. That's about the only place the jig is built so that. Most of the places where gussets go are are free of any jig blocks, so um, it's just the bottom edge that the bottom edge and and a couple places on the front there that you have to worry about. Okay, that's a that's a rib.